Deep in the woods of northeastern Lower Michigan, you'll find thick groves of cedar and willow trees displaying a unique character in the branches. And if you look a little closer in the Harrisville area, you might spot this man and his wife observing these trees a little closer than most. This is artist Greg Boyk, and on his frequent treks into the surrounding forests, his eyes are constantly attuned to the unique forms the trees are displaying. With these, Greg painstakingly forms beautiful rustic furniture, perpetuating a very ancient art form. We visited with Greg recently at his outdoor studio, where he told us about how he was first drew to this nearly lost art. Found a uh, dusty book on top of a shelf in a bookstore. Really? And I was out in Montana, and uh, Livingston, Montana, and, and uh, wiped the dust off of it, and it was on rustic, rustic furniture, and uh, Kind of got some ideas from just looking at the pictures and had to teach myself because I contacted, well, maybe 50 people in the back of that book and got responses from three. And they really didn't want to share their ideas. Really? They, kept, they, they wanted to keep their secrets and pass them down from family to family. And I think that's probably what has kept the art form from uh, developing over the years. Is mm -hmm. Everybody keeps their secrets to themselves. And it's, yeah. It kind of makes it tough to learn. I guess so, but when you, once you learn it, you kind of like, yeah. you want to keep the secrets to yourself, too. Yeah. Like it's kind of hard to get a hold of. Uh, what was your first piece? you remember what you recall what your first piece was that you did? Yeah, it was a chair that I made. Uh, uh -huh. I, uh, I tell you what, it went together a little, little easier than I, than I figured it was going to, uh -huh. and uh, I was really proud when I got it done. I walked away from the thing, took about three steps back and looked at it, and the whole thing just completely blew up. <laughs> I mean, it went about four different directions, and the wood all split. And, uh, uh -huh. So then I had to hit it again and try to figure out what the heck I was doing wrong, so. But um, it's just, uh, I tell you, every year, every springtime when I come out, everything just seems to change because we make a lot of one-of-a-kind pieces, so it's, mm -hmm. it's fun. You never get trapped into an area where you're making the same thing repetitiously over and over again. Well, you can see we create anything from uh, doll furniture all the way to canopy beds. Yeah, I see that um, now. I, I see that you don't process the wood like you say in the boards and the slats or whatever. It's just the raw material form, isn't it? Yes, everything's left in its natural state. So you taught yourself more or yeah. less. You do beautiful work here. Yeah. Can we set this up just a little bit yeah. and see what you're this doing is, here? Uh, this is some work my wife did on the top of the table, too. Oh, and, yeah, uh, the whole this. thing. It's a, it's a um, Inlaid, inlaid style uh, of a tabletop. Uh, you really don't find very many people at all doing this in the United States. So. I see. We, now, uh, you also the, you, you shape and form the, the wood. Now this has got to be a willow, right? Yeah, this is, is a, this is a willow okay. here. This is an ash that, that the frame is made out of. Uh -huh. um, it's a very forgiving wood. Um, it's uh, every piece comes out a little unique because I try not to use the real straight pieces and mm -hmm. I measure everything with my hands and level it all by eye and. Uh, the tools I'm using right here are pretty much what I make the furniture with. So. Oh, great. Now, this is an actual artist yeah. at work because yeah. he's no, you know, really power tools, say power yeah. tools, it's all by yeah. hand, isn't it? Well, once, once in a while, when I'm cutting my tabletops yeah. and whatnot, I'll get out the skill yeah. saw and whatnot. <laughs> Do you find yourself walking through the woods now, looking at it as a piece of furniture every once in a while, how they would look in, as a wood? Oh, yeah, 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 all the time. All, all the time? time. Yes. Uh, yeah. What, where would you get your best inspiration? I mean, what would be... Uh, I mean, how do you get your inspiration? Just walking through the woods, or yeah, well, it's the, just nature gives you its own ideas. It's uh, really the best, the best tool I have to use is Mother Nature. Uh, looking at the branches and the way it's formed its own, uh, the trees form themselves. Uh, I, uh, I lived out in the mountains for 14 years, and I, I get a lot of my inspiration from that. And I don't really know how that ties into the furniture, but I find myself thinking that direction a lot. Uh, uh -huh. I'm going to try to develop a little bit of a market out there this summer around Yellowstone Park. And I wasn't, I was really making it for myself and my friends and, and uh, my family and whatnot. And uh, all of a sudden, I, when I moved back to the state, I, uh, I saw it in, in a few of the magazines that started showing up and, uh, and uh, a few of the stores downstate. And I told my wife, I said, well, look, this is the stuff that we're already making. And we really had never tried anything like this before. So we just uh, got some art show applications and started going around the state doing art shows. What kind of reception are you getting? Are you getting pretty, pretty positive reception? Well, it's been, we've been doing it now for five years, so it's, uh, it goes pretty good. The last couple of years have been hard on the artist, uh, just in general, you mm -hmm. know, as far as the sales and whatnot goes. But mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, when you find something you love, it's hard to give up, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you said that when you first started that uh, you, you stepped back and looked at your, your, your project that you did and it kind of fell apart. But what would you say would be uh, the biggest misconception that you had about uh, creating something like this? Was it... Uh, Anything that you um, pass along? I thought it would be a lot easier yeah. than this. It's a lot more. It's a lot more work just to even just go out into the woods and, and drag the materials in. Uh, everything has to be hand selected. I can't go out and just take any tree. Uh, have to check for the bugs and for the mm -hmm. 
of this trach, you have to uh, experiment with the different varieties of wood. I know up here in Michigan we have four different varieties of uh, willow that I've found. Oh. And two of them work really nice and the other two completely fall apart. So really? it's, it's a trial and error thing. Uh, when, I, when I use a new, new material or a new kind of wood, I have to more or less let the piece sit around for almost a year and, and see how it's going to hold up so that when I go out and take it out to sell, I know what I'm talking about and, mm -hmm. and see how it's going to last. So there is a difference between the wood, you know, what you would use for a couch, than what you would use for a table, right? Or yeah, all well, the different glass? strengths. Yeah, when I have to get into the, the, the pieces that you have to sit in, I, I like to, uh, one, of the, one of the niches that I've fallen into is the, uh, the durability and the strength of my furniture. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, instead of using the, the willow like a lot of the old timers used uh, that I saw for the framework, I got into the, using the hardwoods. And I have a little problem with checking and whatnot, but I've kind of taken care of that and uh, so it's not cracking on me and uh, I get a lot more strength out of my materials. Hmm. It's just yeah. something that you, you've, you've gathered as you've gone along. You've, it's something that well, when I sit in a willow chair that I make completely out of willow, even with the framework, uh, you know, I weigh 270 pounds and it's, when I sat in it, it was bouncing. Uh -huh. And when I went to the hardwoods, I could make a frame that wouldn't give when I sat in it. So that's the direction I went into. Mm -hmm. What's the largest project you've ever did? Oh geez, uh, I'd say canopy beds. It just uh, varies on what anybody wants. You know, uh -huh. we'll do anything anybody wants. So. And it's you and your wife who put them together. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's a joint project. She's out there in the swamps with me. She's out there with the hip boots on and the, uh -huh. walking in the water, cutting the willow, and uh -huh. out in the woods, dragging the wood through the woods. And My gosh, it's a family type yeah. thing now. Oh right? yeah, that's great. Maybe you can show us what you're doing on this project right here. Okay, what do you well, got to do there, Greg? This is an inlaid tabletop, and this is an old this is an old heart design that I found off of a. Uh, in a, in a book that um, a guy had on a chair, on a, on a table that he made all oh, back in the 1800s. And I, oh. and I just thought it was a pretty unique little pattern that he used there. And, and uh, I don't mind using somebody's material if it's, if it's somebody old like that, but I mm -hmm. hate, to, hate to see people copy, you know. People ask me how I, if I soak the material, if I, uh, if I treat it, I, uh, I'm all self-taught, so uh, technically I might be doing it uh, wrong as far as the book might tell me, as far mm -hmm. as an old timer might tell me, but I just, I just rustle the material into place. Do you soak any of your items or at all? No, or not at I all? Don't. This is all? I don't. Just find the one that's best suited for and, uh, it. Well, I go by a uh, combination, by a little bit of the, little bit of the, the feel, and by the, uh, the sound of it. I can, I can hear it and I can feel it in my hands. You know, I can feel it when it's starting to when it's starting to give and when it's starting to go on too far. You know? Oh really? It's gone too far. So it's kind of a uh, more of a touch thing than it is a mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of an artist thing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so no two pieces are alike. I mean there's this no way it can be really. No. This design is taken from uh, what? An ancient uh, I mean some this was a um, long time this ago. This was off of a piece that was in the Adirondack Mountains. Uh, that's a lot of the furniture I like looking at is the stuff that was off in the Adirondacks there that the DuPonts and the and uh, Rockefellers and all those were at out there in the in uh, upstate New York and oh, whatnot yeah. and uh, just kind of form it around. I say the other one comes out a little different. Just dresses the tables up a little bit and gives it a little different, yeah, character. Little different look. Yeah, yeah, Isn't that beautiful. Yeah. Well, Greg, we talked a little bit about the furniture that you did. I also see that you do. You're into something else, which is also very unique. Well, it's just something I kind of made up on my own. I've been developing it over the last couple of years, and I, uh, in the house, I have um, all various pictures, some eagle pictures done. I have. Uh, some wildlife I'm working on. It's just an idea I came up with, and I just uh, this is where it's gone to. You know, it starts off uh, start off with something a little a little smaller like this, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, before I knew it, I was I was getting into a little different area there. You know, so when, when do you find time to do things like that? Do you have to be inspired, or I see you work outside? Do you have to wait till the yeah. weather breaks? Yeah, well, this, this this something like this. That's what I do. I just kind of put it down, and when I and I, I get stuck at it, and when I when I look at it, and all of a sudden I get an idea, and I'll just go with it. You know. And, and mm -hmm. so it, um, this was done kind of like little at a time, whereas the other pieces I sit down and I'll make the furniture, you know, the whole thing. So. Uh-huh. I tell you what, the work here is just fantastic. And you thank make you. it from the beautiful woods of Michigan here in the Harrisville area. Greg, I'd like to thank you for taking All time right. to show us your, thank you. your beautiful talent here. Thank right. you very much for being on Michigan Magazine. Right. Thank you.